Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from Bex and Books, and this is kind of a little impromptu, I guess maybe color and chat, or color with me, or color with me while I chat. I don't know what to call it, but I don't know, I just felt like sitting down and doing this. My husband's out having a guy's night with his friends, so I'm here with my three favorite guys, my dogs, and um, you know, just felt like maybe talking for a little while. Not a long time, because, uh, you know, I tend to make these color and chats a little too long. So, yeah. Um, what I'm working on right now, this is a picture I picked out for um, one of the pictures I wanted to finish in the month of September. And this is in Broken Circles by Tabitha L. Barnett. And you can see it's fish the fishbowl with the black background that there's also the same picture with um oh there's a Christmas one I didn't know um oh there's another fishbowl but I like this one because it looked really tropical but you can also have it with uh just the white background but I like the back black background because I think it makes the the colors kind of pop I'm sorry if you hear my dogs they're not fighting this is how they play and they have to play so loudly but sorry about that so anyway yeah I'm trying to make this um, picture you know kind of bright bright col colors neons you know very tropical looking I know it's not in keeping with the month of September and um, it's officially fall now but I don't know I couldn't wait to this get to this picture as soon as I um, as soon as I got this book this was the first one that caught my eye so yeah I'm getting to the fish I'm trying to figure out what I really want to do with them I'm not quite sure I've picked out some colors but I don't um, I don't really know what I'm doing and this is usually how it goes I'm serious I just start something and I, I don't really know where I'm gonna go from here um, so I guess I'll just kind of see what happens with this little guy here he can be my test fish, so if he turns out poorly, then poor guy, poor little guy. So, yeah. Anyway, so this is my little me time, my little downtime when my husband goes out. You know, I think maybe, you know, I don't know how a lot of wives feel about their husbands going out for guys' night and stuff like that, but, um, I like it <laughs> because I like my alone time because I'm an introvert plus you know let's be honest we've been married for over 19 years now so I mean you know it's nice to have a little break from each other especially to my husband works from home so he's home all day and then you know at night we have dinner and watch show which is fine you know but you know 24 hours 24 7 is is a bit much i'm gonna i'm just gonna say that i love my husband to death but uh yeah 24 hours a day and that's uh that's a little too much and it's so funny how things change because when you're dating you know and you're first you know falling in love and stuff you 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 just like oh I just want to be with them all the time I can't wait till we get married and we could just be with each other all day every day and it's gonna be so great and then you know fast forward to 19 years down the road and it's like yeah you go ahead honey you go ahead have fun with the guys oh it doesn't matter what time you come home just you know drive safely and I'll see you whenever <laughs> you know so yeah things definitely change but I think that's completely normal and it's healthy I think if you spend too much time together as a couple, um, sometimes it can just, you know, that's when it starts getting annoying. I think that's why, like, uh, in, um, when we were in a lot of the lockdowns and stuff like that, um, and people were having to stay at home a lot and working from home, and I, I think everybody was just kind of driving each other crazy because you just need a break sometimes. You don't realize it until you don't have it anymore and you it kind of changes your routine the things you're used to you know like if I'm used to being here and doing laundry on certain days and then my husband's home even though he's working from home he can see he'd be like 
oh, you're doing laundry today? I thought, I thought you were going to wait till tomorrow and do laundry. And it's just like, I've been doing it like this for the past 19 years and you just didn't know, you know, so just trust me, I know what I'm doing, you know, and it's just kind of crazy because, you know, he starts seeing how things are working in the home life that he hasn't been around to see before. And, you know, he's at, um, we have the, um, when you walk upstairs, um, there's a hallway, but before you get to the hallway, there's like this area that's like, a, I guess you kind of kind of call it like a loft area and it's right in front of our bedroom door. So when you walk out of our bedroom door, you have like this big open loft area and that's where we have our computer. So he's right there. Anytime I have to go upstairs, I have to go right past him and our laundry room is upstairs, um, which was great in theory except for when you're moving in it's horrible trying to get a washer and dryer upstairs but now that it's up there i really like having a washer and dryer upstairs so he's sitting there like on conference calls and things like that trying to work and i'm in the background you know making all this noise doing laundry you know and we have lg i don't know if any of you have lg appliances but you know <laughs> when when they're finished they make that little tune and it's like that do you know and I can't tell you how many times that's happened when he's been like on conference calls with like uh, Japan and things like that and I'm, like, I'm so sorry I'm so sorry but you know he just kind of laughs at it and because you know most people are working from home they all understand you know he'll say like it, it doesn't matter because I hear people's kids playing I hear you know people's dogs barking and all that kind of stuff so it's pretty normal but it's still just it's kind of funny. I'm just picturing like the guys in Japan, you know, like having this serious talk about what's going on in the company. And then they just hear the little LG tune start playing out of nowhere. I, I'm just winging this. I have no real plan at all of what's happening here. It's just hard. Maybe if I turn it this way, I can see it better. Yeah. So this is just completely winging it. A true artist at work, everyone. She has no idea what she's doing. She's completely winging it, and you can't even see as I'm coloring it because of the angle I have to turn the book to. Yeah, the last, um, you know. It's nice just having, being able to do this and just, for the most part, have a quiet house when the dogs aren't playing and squeaking toys and running all over the place. And just kind of relax, you know, last few days have been kind of sucky. And when you're somebody like me who has um, anxiety, um, severe anxiety, PTSD, and, um, you know, things are crappy and you're just on high alert all the time. Um, with PTSD, you know, it's just one of those things where you're just you're on high alert you're always waiting for something bad to happen or something to jump out at you or something like that so when i get really stressed and have a lot of anxiety like that it it triggers that a lot more <laughs> and like um uh earlier today um some of my clothes when i wash them i don't dry them so they won't shrink so i kind of lay them out so i had them laying out in our um guest bathroom upstairs and I was in I call it my room because it, it has like all my bookshelves with my books that I read plus my coloring books and just things like that and I was in there and as I was walking out I can see it I could see into that bathroom but the light was hitting the bathroom in such a way that I thought it was a person in the bathroom and oh my god I almost fell out on the floor and I'm not even being dramatic I freaked out and my husband was just starting to leave to go out and I grabbed the phone really quick and called him and I was like oh my god I just had a, a thing I had a trigger I'm having a panic attack I need you to come back in here and you know and of course he came back in and helped me calm down and stuff like that but oh god I hate when that happens and that's when you have something like this like 
anxiety there when you have an anxiety disorder anyway just a gen, even a generalized anxiety disorder I, I think a lot of us we already have weird kind of ticks or things that we do especially um, before we're diagnosed or if we're children when we start having anxiety and they're like these weird kind of things that we do that we don't even realize we're doing it or that it's weird but it's kind of like our way of coping because we don't really know how else to cope because we don't really know what's going on like have this really bad habit of chewing my nails to where I would chew them down like basically to the quick you know and I know that's a very common uh, anxiety type thing is people you know chewing their nails down really low um, I don't know but it, it was really weird but of course as a kid I didn't realize how weird it was and I didn't realize that I was doing it because of that because I was trying to cope in some way but like that's that's just one example but now as an adult that I'm older and uh, I have um, the PTSD which you know I've only officially really had that for um, about two years now when I um, the my trauma that happened to me the memories were suppressed and obviously that was causing the anxiety I was having all those years but I didn't know that <laughs> my subconscious knew it but I didn't know it I may have already said this or talked about this but um when it was finally diagnosed and because I got the memories back I started um, developing weird tics or things like that when I would get really stressed or if I was in the middle of like a panic attack or um, having a flashback or a trigger and one of those things one of the ones that bothers me the most and I hate it because it is like it doesn't just happen when I have anxiety it's something that now ha it's just stuck with me all the time and so in um I'm so glad I learned to edit in videos and sometimes if you listen really closely sometimes in videos when I don't edit it out or I, I don't know why I started on this I was working on the fish oh well um, <laughs> when I don't edit it out you can hear a slight stutter on certain words especially S's and T's I I've never had a stutter and I've never been the type to stutter on words either where I'm like trying to think of the word or, or repeat the word you know to say it correctly but after I was diagnosed with PTSD um, I, I first noticed it when I started having really bad panic attacks and the really big triggers started happening and the bad memories started really coming in and I got to the point to where I was stuttering really badly extremely badly um, when it you know when these things would happen to the point where I got so worried about it anxiety <laughs> neurotic <laughs> I was so worried about it that um, I went to the doctor I went to my doctor because you know that's when we were trying out different medications at the time but I went to my doctor about it and you know he heard me because when I came in I, w I was stuttering and I was like I have just developed this stutter I don't know what is happening I think I may have had a stroke maybe one of my new medications gave me a stroke or something like that and so he started asking me all these questions he knew what medications I was on he knew the newest one he had prescribed me so he was like okay first of all calm down the medication I have prescribed you does, is a very tried and true medication it's been on the market for years and years it does not cause strokes or anything like that and it does not cause stuttering so um, after that that's when you know we talked about it and obviously he was like this is something that is pretty much psychosomatic um, what happened to you was was extremely traumatic so when you get those flashbacks or you get really stressed and stuff it's just triggering that um, that part of your brain where you're so scared 
that kind of like fight, flight, or freeze. What not that what it is? Fight, flight. I forget the other ones. But anyway, it triggers kind of like that part of your body. So, or your brain. So you're so, it's like you're so scared. And apparently one of my responses to being really scared is to start like stuttering because I, I'm I'm so scared so it would be like if I was like in a in a really life or death situation for example and let's say I was held at gunpoint or something there were like where's your wallet where's the money I would be the type of person that would start stuttering or, or be so like in a in a freeze that's my response freeze thing that I wouldn't know how to say what I'm trying to say or it would cause me to start stuttering like I, 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 I you know kind of like that so um, that's the response I get and unfortunately it it's not just when I get triggered when I get triggered it gets really bad so I can't talk sometimes because I start stuttering so badly so I don't even try to talk but now it's just kind of a part of my everyday life to where you know I do stutter from time to time and I do uh, mix up not mix up words but have to repeat words a couple of times and and it, and it just sucks because that that really changed a big part of my personality because um, before then I was never I was always somebody that I remember like being younger, being in school, especially with the teachers and stuff, when I would talk, if I was talking to the teachers or they would ask me to read out loud, they'd be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, slow down. You talk so fast. You read so fast, you know, and it, I was just like that. I could speak really quickly. To me, I didn't think I was doing it, but to a lot of people, they were like, oh my gosh, you talk, you talk so fast. And so it was just kind of known that was a part of my personality. And a lot of people liked it, you know, and thought it was funny or whatever. Because, you know, I would have friends and they would come and try to talk to me. And we would start talking and going back and forth if they were fast talkers too and things like that. And they were, you know, like, all right, let's have our witty repartee, you know. And so we would talk really fast back and forth. And I can't do it anymore. I can't talk as quickly as I used to and not that that's a bad thing I probably should have slowed it down anyway but the main thing is reading um, especially when I'm reading stuff out loud um, <laughs> yeah I trip up on words a lot I read a, have to read a lot more slowly um, and I hate that because in my head when I'm reading I'm a very fast reader so what happens is if I'm reading something out loud, like if I'm reading instructions to my husband for something or anything like that, and I'm, my eyes are going faster than my brain and mouth can now keep up with. So when I read, I usually don't read like word by word. I read like, I can see like two or three sentences. I, re I don't know if this is weird or not, but I like read in sentences, like full sentences. So I'll, as I'm reading, I'm seeing like two sentences and then I move on to the next two or three sentences, you know, so that's what makes me a fast reader and I can usually finish books pretty quickly in my head. But then when I read out loud, my mouth and brain cannot keep up. So I'm tripping over words. I'm saying words that um, are like two or three sentences ahead but I haven't even gotten to the previous words yet, so I'm just making no sense, and I, I hate that so much. Guys, stop it. And I just hate that so much, because that was, I don't know, that was a part of me, that was my personality, and I, I don't, I didn't want things like that to change, you know? Just simple things like that that I never even thought about before and it's just another way where you feel like this mental illness is just taking stealing something from you yet again 
you know, like it's already stolen so much from you, so much of your life, or you've missed out on so much because of it, and then now like something like this, it's like, do you, does it have to be like that too? Do you have to give me the stutter now that I never had before? And, you know, but what are you going to do, I guess? That's what always, what I've, that's been like my motto for like the past, I don't know how many years. It's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I can't help it. You know, um, it made me self-conscious at first, you know, for the first year or so when I was doing it, I, I didn't want to talk to people, um, especially people I knew and who knew me. And if I had talked to them again, started talking to them again for the first time after the stutter started happening, um, I was really self-conscious and really embarrassed. And I, I know they would notice a difference and I, I didn't want to have to explain to them necessarily um, why I had it. Um, because sometimes you want to talk about it and you do want to tell people. You know, and sometimes I don't mind telling my story and telling people how or why I've developed a stutter. But there are some times where it's like, I just don't feel like talking about it today. I just want to have a good day and not think about it. But at the same time, I know people are curious and not in a mean way or anything. But, you know, they're going to be curious to like, what happened? What's going on with you? You know, so it, it, it can be a very awkward or weird situation and I just I hate it I hate that so much <laughs> so yeah so but anyway if I'm a little more stuttery I don't think that's a word but we'll go with it stuttery in this video is just because I've been uh, really stressed and just full of anxiety over the past um, four or five days and it's really really affected me a lot more than uh, you know more than I care to really talk about so that's why I am doing this I'm coloring a crazy fish that I don't like at all because I don't like the way it's turning out. I can't tell with this lighting. I brought, I have a tall light and I'm used to using that one, but I had a, a smaller one. So I kind of brought that one over here, but it's still like, it's just the angle, I guess, of what, of the way the light's hitting the picture. It's just, I can't really see what I'm coloring. So I don't even know if I'm staying within the lines, which is weird. So I feel like I'm going to be like, um, yeah, this looks okay. And then I'm going to get it under my alt light and be like, oh my gosh, what have I done to this poor fish? You know, I talk about my dogs making noise while I'm doing this, but then when it all of a sudden gets really quiet, then I also start getting really suspicious about that. Like you hear like this, you know, squeaking toys and running around, you know, how dogs make the noises when they play with each other and bark and stuff. And then all of a sudden you just hear quiet and you're like, oh no, why is it so quiet? You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling bad for this little fishy. I feel like we're going to have to do something special for him. Give him some little glitter or something so he doesn't get made fun of by the other fishies. <laughs> Looking so bad. I'd originally planned on, I think I had picked out like, I want to say like eight pictures to try to finish um, this month. And I've only finished three and this would be my fourth if I finish this one and today is the 25th I believe and September only has 30 days so I'm not going to be meeting my goal unfortunately but um, with just the way it's been going this month um, it's just uh 
yeah it's been hard so to do to get some of this stuff done and it sounds crazy to sound like coloring is hard like sitting down to color is hard I'm not saying that I'm just saying like um, sometimes there are there have been days where I just actually do not have the time to sit down and color but sometimes it's just about the motivation you have or the way you feel you know I'll, I've done several times where I've walked up to this page you know and grabbed this coloring book and wanted to sit down and you know start coloring and I'll sit down and I'll have my pencils out or whatever and I just sit there staring at it like I have absolutely no motivation no inspiration nothing that's why this little fish looks so terrible because I've had no plan for him poor little fishy so and it's just one of those things and a lot of that just has to do with your mood you know if you're feeling really down you know a lot of times people will say well if you feel bad go do something you like it's easy in theory but sometimes you know that does work and I have done that before where I just push myself and been like okay I'll do it and then I end up feeling better but then sometimes I'm sorry I just made that noise because all of a sudden I feel like this little mouth on my foot and it's my my puppy <laughs> but um sometimes you know you just you really don't have the motivation you're just like I, I can't I can't do this I can't do this right now so yeah um, I know a lot of you can probably relate because I've read some of your stories you've shared some of your stories with me and I appreciate that so much um, it makes me feel less alone um, or less isolated and I hope I make you feel less alone or less isolated because um, we a lot of us share very similar things and similar stories and we all just kind of know how it feels a lot of us do to just be at that that point sometimes you know so um, so that's kind of why I, I don't talk about this stuff to be a downer I talk about this stuff to kind of well I want you guys to kind of um, you know get to know me as a person know know my life a little better you know I, I feel like you know, you know I wanted to connect with people on a, a level like this you know because it it can feel so isolating sometimes when you see other people around you and they're so you know happy and things like that and you're just not understanding them like why are you so happy <laughs> not in me but just like oh my gosh why are you so happy don't you see what's happening don't you see the plight of the world oh my gosh you know when you get so dramatic in your head and things like that but it's good to have people like that in your life because they help balance you out but i think it's good to also have people in your life that are like you and that do understand you um somebody you can really commiserate with and talk to it's it's hard to talk to people even though they love you it's hard to talk to people about this kind of stuff when they when they don't understand you know they'll listen to you and they'll be like yeah yeah you know and try to give you that nice advice you know but we've all heard you know even though it comes out of the goodness of their heart and bless their hearts they don't they don't know how we feel so you know they're doing the very best they can but when you hear like that just keep your chin up just keep your head up you know and stuff like that and it's like you appreciate that advice but sometimes you just want to talk to someone and just commiserate together and be like doesn't it suck when this happens and they're like yeah that totally sucks I hate when that happens or I know exactly what you're talking about that happened to me the other day and just have somebody that kind of gets you sometimes 
that that's a good feeling too so I think it's a good thing to have that balance in your life of people who are don't necessarily understand you a hundred percent who are there to they motivate you they push you they do tell you things like come on let's just go for a walk and you'll feel better you know just just to push you and then sometimes it's good to have people to say I get it I understand I know exactly what you're talking about because that happened to me the other day so let me tell you my story and it just I don't know it's a good feeling sometimes it makes you feel like I said not so alone because one of the biggest things about mental illness and mental health and things like that is that feeling of being alone you know I don't know what I did with my blender pencil well. oh there it is I was picturing like it probably rolled onto the floor and I'm gonna look down and one of my dogs is gonna be chewing on it but yeah I think um, you know um, first and foremost when it when it comes to mental health um, I know everybody has obligations in life people have families you have children you have jobs you have other people that count on you um, every day if you have you know maybe you have parents elderly parents that you have to take care of that count on you or just anything like that but it's really important to sometimes stop and remember that sometimes you need to put yourself first you need to put your mental health first because if you get to the point to where you are so mentally exhausted or mentally drained that you can't even take care of yourself then you know how are you gonna take care of other people and I hope all of you who have these issues or who may have these issues I hope you are blessed enough I hope you're blessed enough to be able to have um, people in your life who can understand that or you know people who can help you with that and say I you know I understand you need a break so you know we're not gonna take it personally we're not gonna you know make you feel bad about it you know you you have to take care of yourself that's so important because if you get to the point where, where you're just out of you can't get out of bed every day then how are you gonna take care of your children you know so you gotta you gotta take care of yourself first and I don't mean that in a selfish way I mean that in a way as you take care of yourself so you can take care of others you know so that's really important when you can whenever you have that opportunity even if it's just leaving the house to go run errands you know maybe take that little extra half an hour you know just to walk around Target or something like that you know just just to get a breather just to maybe get away for a second and you know um, take some time for you go to Barnes & Noble sit down you know like have a, a coffee or a tea and pick up a magazine and read it or pick up a book you know and read or something like that just something to where you can take care of yourself you can calm yourself a little bit and you know just just feel like you can really take a deep breath and just slow everything down and usually when you can do that even if it is for only an hour or half an hour when you do have to go back to regular life and it's chaotic or whatever you, you do end up feeling better you f you feel better because you you did have that little bit of a break so when you walk into the door and you, you know and you're like I gotta fix dinner the kids are screaming the house is a mess the dog needs a bath you know all that kind of stuff um, you, you did have that little bit of relaxation relaxation and you can kind of look back on that you know and if you keep your mind on that and in that state to how you were feeling when you were sitting there you know taking time for yourself then that can help you get through 
you know, a lot of the times, you know, daydream if you have to. I can't tell you how much I daydream sometimes. Not while you're driving. I don't recommend that or doing something really important. But if I've been folding laundry, I can't tell you how many times, like, I'll start thinking about a book I read or a movie I watched or something. I just start kind of daydreaming about things. And all of a sudden, the clothes are folded. And I don't even remember doing it. You know, doing it, but it's done. And I daydreamed my way through it. So, you know, that that's really helpful to do that. So, um, yeah, just whenever you can in the shower. I know a lot of us do that. I've done that a ton of times where you get in the shower and you get out of the shower and all of a sudden you're like, I don't even remember taking my shower. I don't, did I wash my hair? Did I condition it? Did, did I, you know, and you start questioning things because, you know, you kind of get lost in your head and, you know, it's, it's a it's a form of dissociation, but a good form of dissoci dissociation. Um, my therapist talked about that because she said, you know, sometimes we are so stressed, all of us, that it's our brain's way of just kind of taking a break for us, you know? And so that's why sometimes you think, and I know plenty of people have done it, where you're driving and all of a sudden you're home and you're like, I don't even remember the drive home. But it's just your brain's way of just kind of saying, you know, let's relax for a little while. And it's like the same thing when you take the shower and you're like, I don't even remember that. You know, it's just, it's, I think it's just your brain's way of saying, hey, let's just, let's just, you know, calm down for a little while. So I don't mind that. When that happens, you know, it is kind of weird because I do, I'm like, oh God, I don't know if I condition my hair. And the only way I'm going to find out is when I start trying to brush it and dry it, <laughs> you know, but it can be a good thing. That is a, a healthy thing for you. So if you're neurotic like I am and something like that happens, don't think always that like, oh my gosh, I'm losing my memory because that's normally the kind of thing I would think. It's, it's your brain's way of just kind of saying, let's relax. We're overthinking stuff too much, you know? And like I said, whenever you can, just allow yourself to daydream if you want to helps a lot of the mundane things go by a lot faster if you get lost in your daydreams. Um, I also highly recommend um, audiobooks if you like um, reading your stories or books and stuff. Man, sometimes you put in an audiobook and you listen and you're in the shower or you're, like I said, like folding laundry or cleaning the house and it'll be like, it'll go by like that, especially if you're really invested in the story, you know. And audiobooks have become so good these days because um, it's not like back in the day where you would listen to it and it was just like, they would be like, chapter one, blah, 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 blah. Now they these people are really like actors, you know, and sometimes they get different people to do the voice the different characters in the book and you feel like you're actually listening to a movie and then you're picturing it in your head and it's just a great way to escape, you know. So audiobooks have really come a long way. So I do highly recommend those too, just a, a way of escaping for a little while. Listen to it in bits and pieces, you know, whenever you can and get a chance. And never think you're being selfish for taking time for yourself. Never think that because you're important too, you know, you're important too. You're just as important as the people you are taking care of. You're just as important as they are, you know? And a lot of us forget that. But we need to try and remember that too. That our health and our mental health is important. So, yeah, I think I'm going to end this here. I didn't want to go too long and... Once again, I went into some kind of like I'm an inspirational speaker, but I'm really not. I'm just speaking firsthand because, like I said, I've been dealing with anxiety since I was a child. I've been dealing with depression since I was a teenager. I've been dealing with the PTSD for the past several years. So I'm just speaking from my own experiences, what I've learned from my own experiences, what I've learned through 
my therapy and my doctors and stuff and I've really learned a lot of good advice and things like that and if I can share that with people to help you or something or you know um, give you an idea of like hey I've never thought of that or something like that then you know that's my goal that's my goal I want to I want to be able to help people maybe give you a fresh perspective on things and you know just let you know you're not alone I've got your back if you need it I've got your back so I have my email address in the description box I have my Instagram account in the description box so if you ever want to email me or um, message me on Instagram feel free to do so anytime you know I, I'll talk to you I'll listen to you I'll answer questions I'll, all that kind of stuff you know I'll help you in any way I can because like I said um, until you've been through it you know it it's hard to explain it to people so sometimes it's it's really good to just talk to someone who really understands and talking to a therapist is always always the number one thing first because they're trained but um, it's just nice, like I said, to have somebody to kind of commiserate with and, you know, really understand and talk back to you about their own experience as well. Therapists are great because they'll give you advice on how to fix things and cope with things and things like that. But they don't necessarily say, you know, oh, I get that. And this happened to me the other day, you know. So, you know, it, it's good to have somebody to talk to. And um, if if you feel like you don't have anyone or you don't want to bother anyone if you're like me I'm like that a lot of the times like I don't want to burden anyone or anything like that then please feel free to message me or contact me or anything like that because um, you know I'll be more than happy to chat with you or commiserate with you or just if you want to vent any of that you know I'm here for you because I know how it feels so yeah I think I'm gonna end this here I'm gonna try to help this fish <laughs> I'm so bad for this fish <laughs> oh my gosh what a disaster I feel like I'm gonna have to do something special for him so yeah anyway if you watch this and listened all the way through thank you so much um, I hope wherever you are, um, whatever's going on in your life, that uh, you're staying strong and staying healthy, staying happy, staying motivated, because that's what's really important, you know. So, yeah, I want to thank you all so much for watching, so much for listening. Um, if you like this video, if you feel sorry for this fish, <laughs> maybe give this video a thumbs up if if I've helped you in any way you can let me know by giving this video a thumbs up um, if this is the first video you've watched by me um, maybe consider subscribing um, yeah so I appreciate all of you each and every one of you and I will see you very soon in another video take care everybody bye